Welcome to another episode of Team Diecast. Today we are doing our second part of the Pathfinder 2nd Edition review. We've done a little bit of playtesting now and are going to be digging into more of the core concepts of the movement, magic, and um, leveling up and skills and feats a little bit on how they function and our feelings on them so far. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoy. Hope you guys enjoy the video. We're gonna uh, dig into this now, and I think one of the hot topics that we want, we really wanted to touch on uh, the the one that I noticed the most when playing was uh, spells, spells and their the people's capability with them, how powerful they are now. Spells are absolutely amazing. Cantrips that level up with the character. The ability to cast them as many times as you want. They and doing like decent damage. There it's just it's a whole change from what I was used to with spellcasters in the previous Pathfinder or D. With my experience so far, um the cannon trips have gotten a huge uplift and definitely help a lot. But unfortunately it feels like on the flip though, since they made the cantrips powerful, your main core spells got severely weakened. As well as your ability to meta magic them. Fortunately, I'm not a spellcaster, so I <laughs> I, I haven't dug into that one just yet on the on the larger spells. But I know cantrips for sure are just gigantic. What have you ladies seen? Um I used mostly cantrips when we played, but the level one spells that I can do. There are some of them that I'm like, eh, but there are a couple of good ones. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm playing a bard this edition, and I haven't played a bard before, so I don't know. I can't speak on the changes, but um, the cantrips are definitely, like, where it's at for at least my character. They make you feel like... You're not just standing in the back watching everybody else do stuff. Exactly. I actually feel until useful. You get, right. Until you get a high enough level that you can do stuff, this makes you more integrated into mm -hmm. it. Not yeah. just a 1d3 acid splash that you <laughs> hope to hit with and piss someone off. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But like mm -hmm. I was saying, um, I've been looking into the progression of the spells through feats and different abilities, and it doesn't feel like there's a lot of progression with that. They kind of built in um, the old Empower feat into everybody's spellcasting this edition, where you can prepare them at a higher slot to get more powerful effects. That's kind of defaultly built in with everything. The heightened? Is yeah. that what you mean? <clears throat> that's that's fair, and that's it's not necessarily a bad idea in my opinion, just because I've seen... I haven't seen a variety of individuals when it comes to spellcasting. I mean, normally you see someone either running evocation or necromancy or you have you know clerics with their healing and that's that's about <coughs> that's about as far as it goes nobody really dig digs into the other um what was it schools was the term in in uh D D. so building like building the uh the feats into it and making it so that those feats can or uh making it so that those other schools and spells from those schools become useful, I I think it's kind of a nice change. Oh. However, if you're unable to pick anything like later, get something better or cooler because you're a higher level, then that kind of saps the reason for going higher level. Now, the focus spell mechanic, I liked the concept behind that. Yeah. It gives you, like, the per se, one of your spells that you could reuse as long as you take a 10-minute rest afterwards, as well as there were feats to restore the point for it. Huh. Yeah. And you get them from resting also. Yeah, right? the 10-minute rest. Then you get combat. the focus point back? Yep. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep, and then there's, like, um, the clerical version. If you take the feat for it, you can restore your focus point by healing people. Um, or for me, well, since I'm playing a wizard, if I use my bonded item, when I get the feat, I can restore my focus point and cast the focus spell again as well. Oh, I haven't seen anything with that, like that with the druid yet. And this is why I play someone who swings an axe. <laughs> <laughs> now I know like um, with your 
classes, ladies, um, you were able to get two focus points right off the bat where I only had one. Um, that was kind of interesting. I know there's a maximum cap that you can get regardless of source of three. Yeah. Regardless of your level and everything, which is still kind of cool, but with their ability to regenerate mid-combat and as well as outside of combat, it gives you kind of more of a versatile, like not quite the cantrip level, but a little bit more powerful spell that you can just keep reusing. I think it, if there's also feats that allow you to um, either regain them quicker or re replenish them out um, more expeditiously, then that's awesome because that's probably one of the only good things that feats do for you because I haven't mm -hmm. found anything good in feats. Yeah, we'll touch feats here in just a second. Any other yeah. thoughts on the spellcasting? I definitely feel spellcasting is better than the last edition when it comes to the core mechanics. I really like how they made the somatic and components like that actually actions to it that make it feel like it's part of the spell. It makes it a little bit wonky when you're trying to figure out a way to cast two spells since, you know, fighters can swing their axe, you know, a bunch of times. Yeah, I'll be at negative fives, like, after that first, after the first swing. So, that's detrimental, but if you can get two spells off, you don't take a negative, do you? No. Towards your no. hits or anything? But certain. It just depends on what type of spell it is. I have one spell that's two actions, and then I have spells that are just one action. Right. So if spells are super powerful, especially if you can get two off without suffering negatives. Yeah, like one of the big combos I was using, at least at low level so far, is cast shield spell and then one of my attack spells. Mm -hmm. Since shield spell is one action... And the other ones are like two actions to get off, so you could still do an attack and get the shield spell up. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. It's definitely low level spell casting is better. I'm not sure about high level, but we, yeah, we have yet to get there. Right. Yeah, when we get up high level, we will be hopefully touching on that and give our review and feelings on that as well. All right, so next up, um, we'll be talking about feats, progression, and skills and stuff. Which I'm not a huge fan of. The feats, uh, so in 2.0, feats, feats seem really lackluster. Um, they don't change or have a heavy impact on a character, at least as much in the previous edition, or back to play in D&D. &D. Um, it just, they, they were stuff that made, that made the, uh, they, they were game changers. They made it so that the DM had to be very careful in how uh, mobs or, or uh, enemies maneuvered the rest of the team could build together and and create like a combo system amongst themselves it just there was a lot you could do with it and now it's just like well, hey i get a few more points to my skill yeah um i like how they separated the feats in the different categories um the class feats are amazing i think they still have a huge impact on you the general feats are a little bit mm, Situational, but they're still supportive. Skill feats, I feel like they kind of missed the mark with them, other than taking like the generic, hey, I get to train one more point in a skill. It doesn't feel like there's a lot in there. There's a couple that are situationally bad, good, but there's nothing that stands out when you get a skill feat. You're just like, oh, yay, I might as well just train a skill. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I didn't see a whole lot. I mean, general the the general feats uh, off the top of your head. What was like uh, your general feat for your wizard? Um, I believe I took um, fleet of foot or for faster movement. Increased by five. Yeah, because they definitely slowed down everybody's movement in this edition. So yeah. it definitely makes you want to take that extra movement. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, what, do you, what was yours? My... Do you remember your general feat? I don't remember like all of it, but I do know it was like an animal companion one, I believe. Uh, so I guess. Don't yours? ask me. I have no clue. Without looking. <laughs> so no. so with with that being said, I guess I guess there are some general feats that might make a difference. Um, I I just there's nothing I saw when I was going through that made it crazy like. 
The only thing, uh, what was it, the ancestry? Yeah, the ancestral feature, heritage feats. I really like the concept on those because that made it so you could specialize your race a little bit more. But I, at the end of it, though, it's it's only one that you get, right? No, you get one every, like, two levels. For ancestry or yeah. heritage? Yeah, which allows you to really delve into your racial stuff. Which I yeah. did like that, but the skill feats are definitely the bottom of the barrel. When you get one of those, it felt definitely like, I might as well just take skill points. There wasn't like one to give you like, hey, you get an extra bonus for focusing in this, or like a some sort of miscellaneous bonus for these this grouping or something. Or if there was like, if you're trained in these three skills, you get like a bonus to them, you know, or so, something that would make that of taking a feat in it feel like it was worth it well i think i think uh maybe i need to read more on feats but i guess i, I went through a good portion of the list and i just didn't find anything that was really stuck that was awesome do you know how when we, we used to create a character that you had like nearly half a day set aside to to place feats to levels now, and so on i will definitely say this at least from our initial looking at everything from my point of view, I like to plan a character out to level 20. Yes. I've been having severe problems with that so far because there's a lot of good initial stuff, but it doesn't feel like there's any real build type stuff, something to build towards. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a almost generalized the way it goes across every class and or every race and it just, it just doesn't work out. Now, at the time of filming this, there's been three expansion books, and we're counting all three of those, which are the Lost Omens, Character World, and the Deities and Magic oh, yeah. books that have come out. And we've been looking at those. They've added some stuff, but they still haven't expanded enough, I think, to give you, like, they're concentrating too much on low-level stuff. Like, they expect everybody to only play low-level characters, which the first... Five to ten levels, you're going to be having tons of stuff to play with and practice with. At, above me. that, at least planning wise for us, we haven't since we haven't hit that high yet. Um, I haven't been able to plan in anything to really progress in these skills and feats. Yeah, and for like for a barbarian, um, playing a dwarven barbarian, that should be pretty simple for me. Like anything that makes me hit harder or move faster or move and hit harder is is typically what I'm aiming for. Um, increasing rage bonuses, so on and so forth. And I didn't see almost anything that complemented any of what I do. And so it was kind of, it was, it was, uh, underwhelming. Yeah. Like I said, everything is really centered around that, like low level in generalized type, you know, this is something to help get you started and feel the game, but there's nothing at least that they put out at this time that, Gives you that end game progression, which is I'm going to build to be this arcane master or this super berserker, you know, type thing. Or, you know, the orchestra bard that can, you know, play like such powerful music to sway a crowd. There's nothing that really makes you feel like that. Um, uh, with, with what you've seen now, both you and I, we've played a lot. But for... You guys, since you guys haven't played, like, nearly as much of the D&D or RPG all the way through, what do you think, with what you've had before, or with what you've done before to now, like, do you think the changes for better or worse? For me, like, I, when you guys said that you plan out your characters to level 20, Mandy and I looked at each other like, no. nope, we don't do that. <laughs> I look so, a couple levels ahead, but I don't go all the way to 20. Yeah, because I don't see the point until I get there. And I personally have never played a, like with a group that sticks together that long. So to me, there's no point It is hard in to looking find ahead. a group that makes it all the way to yeah. level 20. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I'm the biggest noob of the group, so like I don't have much to say in terms of the changes. What about you? I don't know. I don't have a whole lot to say either. I think I need to play a little more before I can form an opinion yeah. about it. 
Yeah, right. totally understandable. Um, I've already pretty much stated mm -hmm. how I feel on that. Definitely there needs to be a lot more in-game type stuff, and I really feel that they're missing the mark by the only real restrictions I've seen on most feats and stuff is just like either level or maybe stat. There's not like a skill tree progression or, you know, a talent tree type thing. Mm -hmm. Where, like, before you used to have to take power attack to get cleave and so on and so forth, there was a whole bunch of build up to it, and oh. each one like progressed you, and it kind of felt like you're becoming this weapon master then style build. With this one, it's just like, oh, you need a 14 strength to be able to do this yeah. at level three, you know, just for a random example. It's there was just nothing like. You need to progress. You need these two skills to use that. I kind of like that. I know people call it feet tax, but to me it was more of that gave you a build type where now it's just like you can take whatever. It doesn't really matter. There's no build to it. Yeah, it, before you were focusing, pushing towards the goal. Now it's, oh, you get whatever you want. Um, Which I know that, that gives you more freedom per se, but it also gives you like the... Well, what do I need to take, or what do I feel like taking at this moment? Not uh, overall, this would help me do this better type thing. Not really. There's not a lot of synergy either with a lot of the feats. They're just kind of like, this gives you this one thing, and nothing else does. Yeah, someone specializing in something should be essentially superior to someone who's a jack of all trades. Um, when it comes to that, that, one, that one specific uh, niche that they fill... Uh, but uh becoming that jack of all trades the it's it's good and it's great for a game i mean that's what rogues that's what they that's the perfect position for a rogue to fill however you you really you really have to reward the individuals that are pushing for that specialization in in their area in their in their yeah. own uh uh what is that niche Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. Yeah. Third and final topic for this is how combat flows and the flow of it. Now, combat has changed dramatically between editions. It's three actions, and you get to do anything pretty much in those three actions. You get one reaction outside of your turn that you can do. Big change compared to what we've experienced before. Yeah. Much way big change compared to what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. um, with that, with those three actions, like you said, you can do pretty much anything you want. Um, anything that you you happen to do at that point is an action. Spells, when they say they cost two actions, it's because, generally because they have, say, a verbal and a somatic component. Um, so, but being a wizard, you can move your movement and cast that spell or and then move again yeah and then move again if it's only a you know a single action spell you you can split it up as you need to and it makes it very versatile your your combat isn't it, it isn't cookie cutter this is the same thing i'm doing over and over again yeah um but there's also i mean there can also be drawbacks to it right yeah like there's no longer the full attack action which is one thing that is at low level it doesn't affect you as much but at higher levels being able to you know really pound into that target it's kind of missing um as we play more definitely i want to dig in and see if there's a way to make like the good old even though you dislike the character dritz Stewart in you know two weapon fighter type thing you know Let's since he's the thing. famous you know two weapon fighter you know, that style build, you know, being able to do a ton of attacks in a short amount of time. And I don't see much in the way so far, just at glancing, to really build a character that feels like I can do, like, multi-attacks. Well, and the reason for that is because multi-attacks get heavily penalized. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're taking two actions as, say, my Barbarian. If I take two actions to attack... My first one's at my full attack bonus. My second one is at negative five. 
And that, you know, it sounds um, kind of in line with where you were before with Pathfinder and such. However, the, the, the level 20 barbarian that gets to get the four attacks, you know, um, at 20, 15, 10, and 5 for their attack bonuses, you're still only getting two. You don't get four, you get two, and it's still, you're eating negative five, so why are you eating a negative when you're getting half the amount of attacks you would back in the day? And, uh, like, you know, the multi-weapon fighter back in the oh, day, yeah. you were doing seven attacks, eight if you really went out of your way to find a way to loophole it, but you could get seven to eight attacks with a multi-weapon fighter. Mm -hmm. And three of them, if you were doing the eight attacks, were at your full attack bonus, which took a lot of work to get that. But, you know, three at full yeah. attack, and then, you know, three more with your main hand, and two with your offhand after that. Yep, yeah, but it's still... At degrading, you know, it yeah. hits. But it was a lot of attacks. You could dish out a ton of damage. And it made, it made a huge difference in your game when... You're not going up against that 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 boss monster, but you're going up against this army, of this boss encounter where it's an army of individuals. Oh yeah, you still felt you know unique. You can go through and do your eight attacks. You're really you're getting work done. In this, when I hear eight attacks in second edition, all I can think of is like a negative forty modifier. <laughs> like oh damn. Gosh. <laughs> but yeah, there's um, it, it makes it feel like if you're running into that horde of goblins or kobolds, you're gonna have to use explosions. You can't hack through it. Yeah. You literally are like, I kill one, maybe a second. Golf club through them one by one. If you have like some of the feats like cleave or something, they do help. But at the same time, you're leaving yourself vulnerable too. Yeah, yeah. Because you take negatives to your AC to use it. Oh, wait, like, I can see, I, I can understand how they wanted to take it that direction. I just think, personally, I favor, I favor the, uh, the multi-attacks without that kind of, uh, like, just terrible penalty that would be, be provided to you. But, um, there may be ways to get around it. Um, that come out in the future. Um, Let's hope so. But at the at least early edition and our early levels on our exploration of this stuff, um, it feels very narrow. Yeah, um, narrow and narrow to me in the uh, the five E sense of D and D, which like it, it took a lot of that customization and specialization away, and so that really um, that that really rubs against me. In a negative way. Hmm. Now, I know um, you ladies got to use a lot of support type stuff in this. Um, how does that feel in this? Does it feel like it's better or weaker in this edition? Or From seeing some of the spells I believe you were doing in a different campaign we have to what I can. Oh. They seem pretty good. About equal... I guess maybe for some of them, maybe a little better. Yeah, I feel like mine are stronger, actually. I think like, the support ones are huge. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah. rather than, oh, you only get a plus one to your AC, now I can do, like, plus one to your AC and attack rolls and damage rolls all in one or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So... That part is super awesome. Yeah, like, it'll be more powerful. Makes me yeah, yeah. The, they definitely made support feel like it's a lot stronger. Yeah. I think without support in in the parties, um, in second edition, you're uh, you're in trouble big time because with what we've encountered so far, needing that extra to hit that extra AC, it's been paramount to our success. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. It's kind of insane when you look at, like, what they count as a CR1 creature with an AC of an 18. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, that's insanity. Crap. Now, like in older editions, um, you had, like, special ways to hit things with high AC as a caster. Now you're hitting on AC, but you get to use your intellect. Like, my spellcaster has a plus 7 to hit, same as his barbarian. But... The whole thing is, is that 
at an 18, we're having to roll an 11 or higher, or higher to try to hit that, which is huge. Yeah. When you're trying to battle like early level, you're trying to roll high. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's a hard part because once you start removing like one number instead of having to roll a ten, you have to roll an eleven or a twelve. You start upping it even by one digit, it it changes everything drastically on on your efficiency as just your character or the team as a whole. Oh yeah. Like, um, I know orcs, for example, they have, like, two different profiles. The level one-ish one is a CR, what is he, a 17 or 18 also? Yeah, he was at 18 also. For the AC? Yeah, yeah. the AC. And it's like, these guys are huge at, for just a CR one. It's like, just insanity on how easily they can slaughter a party. No, I didn't see anything in the orcs. Where they have that that uh, deathless fury or whatever, like orcs in in uh, yeah. first edition had, which that was kind of a d bag thing, because orcs would just murder, uh, like orcs could potentially murder an entire party, and they're only cr one because you can throw what was it, it was two or three, because there was like they cr one third or one yeah. half or something yeah. Um, yeah, you could throw like three of them out of party, and because of their attack, their their bonus to hit, the amount of damage they do with falchions, and the fact that they don't die until one round after you've done enough damage. Yeah. They or you did just twice their health, basically. Yeah. Yeah, they they could murder a party. I don't see that now, but I do see. I do see, like, a string of bad rolls bringing the end to a party instead. Oh, yeah. A little bit quicker than before. Absolutely. Because with the players getting, per se, more strength, the monsters got, like, a way larger boost, it feels like, at least at low level. Jesus, always take a cleric. Whoever you guys are, <laughs> always take a cleric. <laughs> or some sort of dedicated healer. Yes. Yeah. My god, I got turned into a pincushion by two CR1 creatures and they dropped them in like one, it was or one, one attack each. each. Yeah. And I'm a barbarian. I was at over 30 health at level one while raging. It was nuts. Um, so definitely dedicated heal. <laughs> and buffs. Anyone that buffs and raises AC in your attack, they're amazing. Yeah. Right. But overall, the flow of combat, um, I like how it moves. Um, one of the things, um, since attack of opportunities have been removed from the game pretty much, with the exception of specific classes, it feels like if um, you have a little mm. bit too much mobility in combat. Like there's no way to like lock a person down, at least not that I've seen. If there is, you know, please leave that in the comments and let us know. I actually have an ability that... Or I have access to an ability that allows me to move with an enemy. That way they can't run away. But there's no way to really, um, that I've seen at least, that you can lock somebody down. There's, oh, you yeah. know, like... Play, the, play that game of cornering them and... Well, like, there's no way to become, like, the per se tank type role. Like, mm. to make somebody, you have to attack me. I haven't seen a taunt mechanic or anything. Or right. a way to, like, you know, stun an enemy if they try to move. Or lock them into place if they try to move. You know, be, with a fighter type character. There may be something in there. I haven't seen it. I guarantee but, something's going to be in there for mages and stuff. But, but fighter-wise, yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen anything like that yet, I don't think. Yeah. Have you ladies seen anything that really helps like create a tank type character? No. no. Yeah, at least with all the attacks of opportunity before you had a tank type character because the monsters moved away from you, you could just, you know, just play whack-a-mole as they tried to move away, which tore them apart. Absolutely. And this, it's like the monsters can pretty much ignore your tank and just go for all your squishies. Yeah, you have to be you have to be further away from from combat, you have to be more cognizant of where you're at and how you can move away from anything that's super strong yeah. that can get behind you and take and and uh, or that can get behind your front line and take care of your squishies. 
Yeah, I know there's some defensive reactions you can take to protect yourself, like with the shield spell for me, or you know, for the cleric with his shield, we have the shield block reaction that we can take. But for a lot of the other characters, like there's nothing for no, the druid as far as I know. I don't even believe I have a shield spell. And I think I took a shield spell. So yeah. I don't think I have a shield spell. I think everyone should be carrying a shield. For those instances. But you need to be trained in that reaction otherwise. I can't right. carry a shield. You can carry a wooden shield. You should be able to, but you'd have to take a feat to yeah. use the shield block reaction. But that's like, uh, from everything I've seen, because you can get into those terrible situations and blocking with that shield can reduce the amount of damage you take. I think everyone should at least uh, try to work to where they can, where they can, uh, use a shield or be proficient enough so they can ready ready their shield on their turn. Yeah. In case. Just in case. It's it feats the feats that I've seen haven't been so helpful so far anyways. So if if that one if there's one for that, definitely take that one. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't but know. overall, um I'm liking the early sages, but I'm seeing the late sages, at least from looking at it build wise are not going very well. They need more stuff there, but the early stage is definitely well thought out for the most part. What would you um, What would you say your preference is right now, first or second? I'm still leaning a little bit more towards first, but that's because I enjoy building towards something. And right now, with the lack of like high level stuff to build towards, mm -hmm. it just kind of feels like I'm gonna make a level ten character and then have nothing to really go past. Just to gain levels, to gain levels for the sake of level gaining after that. <laughs> right. Not really to gain a feat, but just because... Diablo uh, 3, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> I lean towards first a little more. Towards first. But it's more traditional in the way that I've learned throughout playing. So it's more of a familiarity type mm -hmm. thing right now. I would say the same for me. Like, honestly, if I had to pick one, it'd be 3.5. <laughs> but... But Pathfinder, first edition Pathfinder, being the most recent and one that one that really did streamline a lot with the rules and everything versus like D and D three point five, I would I would have to lean. I'm I'm pretty solid on first edition so far. Um, hopefully, there's stuff that comes out in second edition that changes my mind or or gets me amped up and excited for it. Yeah, I'm definitely hoping for some more releases. Yeah, a lot, like there's so many first edition books that there's so little second, so you just are not sure what, how yeah. it's gonna build up. With only three um, releases of expansion material right now, not mm -hmm. counting B series because that's doesn't help players. I don't know, I, I can't really choose one. If anything, I might be leaning a little bit towards second. <laughs> Just because of the spells? For, yeah, probably. Because, like, pretty much all I play uses spells. Yeah. Even though I hate spells. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hate having to keep track of all of that. But, like, in our first edition campaign, even though I've helped, I feel useless every time it comes to my turn. Like... But when we played second edition, I felt like I was actually doing something with my turn. I can so. understand that. Oh, yeah, definitely. I I've definitely, like I said, um, the low-level stuff, I feel it's amazing. But um, I'm hoping as more books release, we will see more stuff delve in um, and help us with the higher-level stuff when we get to that point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, um, if you guys have any um, thoughts on this for low level, this is our low level review. So um, definitely throw your two cents in the comments and let us know if you have any feats or stuff that you've spotted in the content that's out right now. Let us know. Help us find it because we must be missing it or it's not out yet. You know, we're not, we're not scholarly on this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I guess until next time then, guys. Uh, this is Matt, Mike, Mandy, Mandy. and Kat. Make sure to like and subscribe. Yep, have a good night.